Welcome to another episode of Trial Site News. Today we're going to look at two former ESPN employees who are now suing the Walt Disney Company and ESPN over their termination for refusing to comply with the COVID-19 vaccination mandate. We're going to discuss what is happening here. And so, from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode is starting right now. The case filed in the United States District Court, District of Connecticut, Beth Faber and Allison Williams, the plaintiffs, have filed a suit against ESPN and the Walt Disney Company. According to an article on Fox News, Allison Williams, who had been outspoken about vaccine mandates, announced back on October of 2021 on Instagram, saying that it went against my values and my morals. She said that I have been denied my request for accommodation by ESPN and the Walt Disney Company, and effective next week, I will be separated from the company. I am so morally and ethically not aligned with this. I've had to really dig deep and analyze my values and my morals. Ultimately, I need to put them first. The irony in all of this are the same values and principles I hold so dear are what made me a really good employee and probably what helped with the success I've been able to have in my career. And then we have the other defendant, Beth Fomber, an ESPN employee of 31 years, who, according to the lawsuit filing, received an email on May 27th of 2021 from Amanda Gifford, Vice President of Content Strategy and Audio, who informed her that she was required to receive a COVID-19 vaccination by July 31st of 2021. And she was also notified that preferential treatment would be given to the fully vaccinated for work location assignments beginning by the end of June. Now, no process or provision for religious exemption requests was mentioned in the email. And after some back and forth, she had a conversation with the Human Resources Representative Julie Walden on June 1st of 2021, who, according to the lawsuit when she expressed her sincere religious beliefs about the role God plays in her life and the basis for her religious objection, Julie, the HR rep, replied with, Maybe God has led you to a new career. When God closes a door, he opens another. And so, by June 15th of 2021, the plaintiff applied for exemption from vaccination on grounds of religion. She provided a detailed seven-point articulation of her sincerely held religious beliefs, including hours and hours of prayer and rereading scripture as part of her decision-making process. But the HR representative, Julie Walden, objected to her sincerity claim and interestingly asked for the name of her parish representative to, quote, discuss their opposition to vaccination and what accommodation would be acceptable from a religious point of view. In other words, her beliefs wasn't enough. They wanted an expert in her religion to qualify her personally held religious beliefs. Astounding. Now, the plaintiff replied to this request, saying, I do not even know how to respond to this other than to say that my sincere personal religious beliefs are my own. My religious beliefs have grown, changed, and evolved all of my life as my relationship and connection with God continues to grow, change, and strengthen. I do not expect to be cross-examined or to have to bring in an expert on my own personal religious beliefs for anyone to judge me or my belief in God's will for me. My sincerely held religious beliefs preclude me from taking the COVID-19 vaccine. I believe the Bible. I believe in their guidance I receive through prayer and scripture. Have a good day. To this, Walden, the HR representative, replied on July 12th, saying that she would deny her request because, quote, you have not provided sufficient documentation to support your accommodation request, and your request is denied. Now, the suit also claims that Disney has a symbiotic relationship with the Defense Department and that it is, quote, well known that the Defense Department has exercised direct editorial control over Disney's content. That control does not stop at content, but extends to direct, indirect, and covert encouragement as it pertains to policies and practices such as vaccination requirements. Now, Faber and Williams are seeking compensatory damages, back and front pay, reputational damages, damages for emotional trauma and distress, punitive damages, reasonable attorney's fees, and costs of the action pre- and post-judgment interest. 
Now, this, my friends, is part of a growing avalanche of lawsuits against companies for the vaccine mandates that they had to endure. In fact, according to the National Law Review, lawsuits opposing COVID-19 vaccine mandates have now surpassed the 1,000 complaint mark. This, with the overwhelming majority of these cases, 75%, have been filed against employers. August of 2022 brought the highest number of new complaints challenging employer COVID-19 vaccination requirements since the wave of vaccine mandate litigation began. According to the article by National Law Review, the jump in filings may be attributed in part to the dismissals that the EEOC and state agencies are beginning to issue on some of the thousands of charges that have been filed. The updated guidance from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, and the changing attitude toward the vaccines and COVID-19 also may be having an impact here. Litigation, my friends, is taking its toll. While employer vaccine mandates were much more prevalent last fall and winter, with worker shortages, changing attitudes towards COVID-19, updated CDC guidance, and the litigation risks, many employers who are not required to have vaccine mandates have decided to move forward without them. A step in the right direction for freedom of bodily autonomy. Now, this isn't the first time we've covered such a story here on Trial Site News on YouTube. In fact, just last week on January 2nd, we covered a story where the North Shore Health System settled with plaintiffs who brought a class action lawsuit against the health system that had forced COVID-19 vaccination or suffered termination. The North Shore University Health System was forced to pay out $10.3 million to the workers who had been terminated or who had caved to the pressure and allowed themselves to be vaccinated. At the time of the settlement agreement, back in August, and as part of the agreement, the health system moved to rehire the terminated employees who opted to not subject themselves to the COVID-19 vaccination due to religious beliefs. The Liberty Council, the firm that represented the plaintiffs in this suit, declared that this agreement was the first such class action settlement against a private employer involving a COVID-19 vaccine mandate in the country. According to the nonprofit organization's founder and chairman, Matt Staver, the decision should, quote, send shockwaves or a wake-up call, at least, to employers to follow the law under Title VII. The Liberty Council emphasized in its press release the importance of Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, prohibiting employment discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, and national origin. Matt Staver said that, quote, a number of employers have these blanket policies to get the COVID-19 vaccine or be terminated without taking into consideration individual religious exemption requests. And indeed, the wave of lawsuits are now being felt all across the Fruited Plains here in the United States. You almost get the feeling now that perhaps we might actually be seeing the dawn breaking for those who desperately wish to hold on to their personal freedoms. And that, my friends, will bring our episode to a close once more. For more content like this, be sure to check back to this channel daily, Monday through Friday, or for numerous written articles daily, seven days a week, you can visit us at trialsitenews.com. And as ever, always, my friends, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and I will see you all next time.